Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. This week on the show, I'm here at the home of the 2012 Delaware Swamp Stomp. This 5K mud course will challenge you both physically and mentally. We'll take you from the starting horn to the finish line. Plus, back to school isn't the only time for a history lesson. We'll check out the living history at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. And the archery season is already here, and we're still gearing up. We'll breathe some new life into that old bow. Right now on Outdoors Delmarva. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. And now, here's Mike Parker. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. We'll be checking in with my partner, Captain Willie Dykes, in just a few minutes. Well, if you can't tell folks here by my appearance and what's going on behind me, we're here at the Delaware Swamp Stomp. Yeah, the second annual event here in Sussex County at Ellis Farm, home of the Gumboro Mud Bog. But no trucks, no, we're talking hundreds of runners taking on this brutal 5K mud course filled with obstacles that'll challenge you both physically and mentally. I'll tell you what, it takes a lot of teamwork to reach the finish line. You don't get there easily. Take a look. And the home of the The Delaware Swamp Stomp is quickly becoming one of the biggest events to hit Sussex County in years. Well, this year we had a great turnout, unbelievable turnout. We went from about 180 people last year to probably well over 800 people this year. Just a year ago, the first annual 5K Mud Run and Obstacle Course drew a flurry of local athletes and daredevils. In its second edition, it's a truly regional event, and the Swamp Stomp is setting its feet firmly or let's say it's really beginning to stick. <laughs> to begin, let's meet some of the teams we'll be seeing along today's course. It's a We're the Magnificent Matters! We're the Harley's Heroes! We're the Laurel All-Stars! We're the Fire Hogs from Bethany Beach! The runners are off, and the dash to the finish, 3.1 miles away, is on. For a first-hand look at how low you must go, we ask a few athletes to carry the viewer venture cam along. Light at the end of the tunnel? Sure, but that's only a few hundred yards in. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, if you watched the show earlier this month, you saw yours truly taking a dry run of some of the Swamp Stomp's newest obstacles, like this 20-foot ladder climb and this excruciating series of humps, bumps, and ditches. Now it's the competitors' turn to take them on, and the course flooded with mud. They'll be putting their physical capabilities to the limits. Doesn't look that bad, but as soon as you jump in, you sink, your feet, your shoes get full of mud, and uh, it takes a lot of teamwork to get out of it. Have people really been losing their shoes? Absolutely. We've got a whole stash of them right here. This is by far the worst obstacle, and is wearing everybody out by the time they get to the next one. It's tougher than last year. Especially this one. This wasn't here last year. <laughs> oh, wonderful! It's refreshing, it's cool, it's muddy, it's everything. That was good, Dawn. Hard, muddy, wet, smelly. To continue the course, our friend Jay Baxter will be giving us a new adventure perspective. This is his team name is the VM Stompers. Their motto is don't dump off your friends to be number one. one. Number one. Next up, the mine shaft. Requiring a dark, dingy belly crawl beneath 40 yards of creek topped with a tarp. A snake! A snake! That's been the worst so far. It's a lot of upper body strength and lower at all the same time, but stuff. That was no joke. But uh 
respond very well in shape, though. <laughs> My cardio is bad. Oh, man, unbelievable turnout, man. Great, great, great. Unbelievable response. And, uh, looks like everybody's having a wonderful time. Teamwork. To complete the course, Swamp Stompers will find little rest, navigating fields of mud, <laughs> trying not to stick, leaping a mountain of monster truck tires, and even going dumpster diving. Hey, it's one thing to be a spectator here at the Delaware Swamp Stomp. I mean, there's plenty of people just watching it and having a lot of fun that way. But if you're really going to get the full experience, i got to try out at least one obstacle, right? Oh, awesome. 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 Everybody's got to do it. Everybody's got to do it. But with the finish line now in view, it's still not quite the end. A deep pit of mud still awaits these teams of thrill seekers. And as Mother Mud does everything she can to collect her victims along the way, teamwork and toughness have paid off as team after team crosses the finish line together. Conquer the 2012 Delaware Swamp Stop. It's a great feeling. Yeah. We're just glad to come out and do something for charity. Not bad for Fort man. Christian High Schools. It's, it's awesome. We love it. One, two, three, down, down, down. It was really fun. Uh, it was difficult. And I had to keep them up, keep their hearts with me and everything. Got to keep them through the race. It's awesome out here. We had a great time. And we tried to be the fastest. We won that trophy. We did awesome today. We were one of the first girl teams to finish. We're all from Fenwick Island. We work out on the beach together. And we came here and, and we almost beat some, some army men today. Well, there it is, guys. 2012 Delaware Swamp Stop. Getting muddy, having fun, raising money for all sorts of great causes across Del Marva. I get to get to the finish line now. So I guess there's only one thing left to say. And that's how you do the Delaware Swamp Stop. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, we're going to take you to a place where you can see history come alive. But first, did you know? The Delaware Swamp Stop takes place on the same grounds as the Gumboro Mud Ball. And the 2010 wreck involving the Bog Hall is one of our wildest pieces of video ever. We'll show you where a tribute to this local mud bogger remains when we come back. You're watching Outdoors Del Marva. Presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice. And Goody's Marine. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. The wreck involving the Bog Hog at the 2010 Gumboro Mud Bog is remembered by its door, which hangs proudly on the wall inside the garage at Ellis Farm. Did You Know is sponsored by North Bay Marina. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. If you're looking for a fascinating day trip destination, we're going to take you to St. Michael's where you can watch Chesapeake maritime traditions go from the workshop to the water. Founded in 1965, the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum in Talbot County, Maryland is an 18-acre waterfront treasure that was once a bustling working complex that consisted of docks, workboats, and seafood packing houses. Today, the museum consists of 35 buildings. Ten of those house exhibits open for public enjoyment. But the heart of the museum is its famed shipyard, where a dedicated group of artisans and craftsmen pour sweat and passion into restoring the proud history of the Chesapeake. This beautiful destination is a treat for the eye as well as the inquiring mind. The best place to get an overview of the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum is from the very top of the Hooper Strait Lighthouse. And we're here today with the curator of the museum, Pete Lesher. Pete, good to have you here. Good to be here. And what's going on here today? Well, there's always something going on in this boat yard. Um, you, you can see that we're, we're spread out uh, across a couple of acres here. There's two shops and a tent 
uh, where we have work going on. Under the tent is a three-year restoration program on the Rosie Parks. Uh, the shop next to it ha has all the shop tools that uh, are supporting that project. And the main shop, we have both a boat restoration going on uh, as, well as, uh, as well as some teaching. Every weekend there's, uh, there's uh, teaching going on here with a drop-in program that any member of the public can come by and lend a hand and get a little bit of experience, get their hands dirty. Well, Pete, it looks like they're hard at work down there, so let's get down and uh, take a look. Okay, this looks like kind of the, the focus, the big deal here in the boat yard at this particular time. What's going on here? This, this is our big project. You're looking at uh, the Skipjack Rosie Parks. Her side planks have these, these curious scarfs uh -huh. in them where one plank is joined to the next. That's not the way most skipjacks were done, but that's the way this skipjack was done, and so we're putting her back the way her builder uh, built her. What material are they using for the caulking? Here? It's it's uh, it's cotton, cotton that's played out and then and then pounded in with uh, with special irons, usually about two inches long. Well, come on in. Okay. What you can't see is the smell in this place. The different kinds of freshly cut wood. It's worth the trip. This is Rosie. She's uh, she is the uh, the boat rights dog and. Uh, not surprisingly, she's named for the uh, for the boat. She's the mascot for this whole project. We're building um, the outer, we call them log rails. This is the port, outside of the port side like this. And then we'll come three inches over here and make a cut. The starboard side, we're gonna lay out the same way. So then after we cut it out, this side gets flipped over this way. Yes, my uh, father-in-law was a carpenter and I worked with him for a while when I first got married, and much to his chagrin, I'm sure, but uh, an occupation that looks so simple, you just, you just take one board and you nail it to another board. Each, every single piece of wood is an individual. It has individual grains, it has, you can look at it and see what it's gonna do in a year mm -hmm. and whatnot, and that, to me, it's just too many decisions. <laughs> Our, we're walking into the, the main shop, uh, and we are, you can see just a little look, uh, a little bit of the transom of the of our Potomac River dory boat, and she too will go back in the water. The sides, we think we can save all of the sides, uh, some of the frames. There's been extensive work done on her before, including a pretty extensive rebuilding of her transom. Uh, but uh, this time around, it, it, uh, it really is her bottom that needs the most serious work. It's not just about uh, saving the tools. It's not just about preserving the objects. It's about preserving the skills yes. that are needed to, to save these boats. So our, our employing our craftsmen here, uh, bringing our apprentices on for year-long terms, it's all about perpetuating the skills that are needed to continue to preserve these boats for another generation. The results of all this hard work can be found moored at the museum's docks. From the log-bottomed bug-eye, Edna Lockwood, originally built in 1889 and now fully restored to working order, to the Tug Delaware. Built in Laurel, Delaware in 1912, this working example of the museum's powers of restoration is celebrating its centennial. Well, Pete, it's been quite a journey from the bare bones of the shipbuilding process right out to the finished product. Thanks a lot for the tour. You're certainly welcome. But remember, these, these products are never really finished. There you go. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And there are plenty of other restorations or works in progress to be discovered at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, where history truly comes alive. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, archery season is underway, but we're still gearing up. Find out how to breathe some new life into that old bow. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Thanks for watching Outdoors Delmarva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. Well, bow season is upon us. And as the longest season of the year, there's a lot to get out and enjoy. So we've put together a three-part series called All Things Bow, where we'll take you through everything from getting your bow tuned up to comparing the various types of bows that you can use in the field and even a tutorial on which arrows might work best for you. 
If you mention archery expertise anywhere on Delmarva, a couple of names come up regularly, and one of those is Kelly Rotts here at Shorts Archery in Long Neck. Hey Kelly, how are you doing? Welcome to the store, Willie. How are Thank you? Thank you. Kelly, what are some of the things that uh, all of us need to look for in our equipment before we head out that opening day? Well, of course, everybody wants to shoot their equipment, make sure that you're sighted in before we go afield. Uh, for the compound shooters, we definitely have to look at the strings, cables, make sure the eccentrics are lubricated properly. This is a prime example of, a, uh, of an older bow mm -hmm. that has been let go. The strings and cables on here are very dry. You can see that they're starting to fray. A bow like this will break it down, will restring it, recable it, uh, and then just go through the fine tuning process from there. What we do when we break down a bow, uh, where the axles go through the center of the cam and through the limbs themselves, drop, we pull drop, the axles drop. out, we lubricate them. If they're bushings, uh, you can grease them. Some have sealed bearings in there, which we don't have to lubricate the bearings. But the pressure points here, the limb pockets themselves where the pressure is on the limb, if it's dry, you'll get a little bit of a squeak in there. Uh, and then from there, any, any of the moving parts inside the riser, we, we lubricate those. It's basically pressure points and moving parts that have to be lubricated. Can we take a look at a crossbow? See what sure kind we of can. things you do with that. So the crossbow is, is kind of a blend of both a bow and a gun all together. You have the optics and the stock of a firearm, but you have the moving parts of a bow up front. Same thing on the crossbow, like the vertical bow, we really want to watch the strings and cables, especially on the crossbows because of the increased poundage. Kelly, I have an old recurve here that I've had for a long time, and I want to take it out this year, and I want to make sure it's set up right. What kind of things am I looking for to make sure that thing is ready to shoot? Okay, if I'm looking at a, uh, a basic recurve like what you brought in here today, the first thing is going to be the knock point height. Mm -hmm. When the arrow on this one, there's not a rest, we're shooting off of the shelf here. So we need to check to see what the angle is from the top of the shelf to the knock point. Mm -hmm. On a traditional bow, the knocking point should be about 3 eighths of an inch above 90 degrees. The most important tools that any archer who likes to do his own work should have in his collection is what they call a bow square. Yes. This way you know you're at 90 degree angles coming off of the string. All we need to do on this is we lay it on the shelf, flip it onto the string load it so that there's not too much pressure. This is our zero mark, which is you know 90 degrees to the shelf. Mm -hmm. And if you look, three eighths is right here, so you're just about a, eight high. Yep, a little bit okay. high. In the old days, they used beeswax. Today, we use a synthetic wax, and there's several different types. So just apply it you know, fairly generously, all up and down the string, everything that's exposed. You can use your, your thumb and forefinger to work it in there, but the friction heats up. Yeah. So if you use a little leather tab, we can heat it up, work it right into the string. I use the same type of uh, wax on the strings on all three on, types on of bows? All, all bows, yes. Okay. Compound, um, crossbow, and, and traditional bows. A dry string is like a sponge. It absorbs water. Uh, yeah. It comes in, then it's heavy. When you shoot it, it doesn't react the same way as when it's dry. So a wax string will bead water on the outside they're called cat whiskers, but string silencers. Mm -hmm. All it is, they're perforated rubber strips. That takes the twang out the, of the string. That's what it does. If you were to pluck a bowstring that doesn't have any kind of silencers, it kind of sounds like a banjo. It's got a little. Yes. That's what a set of cat whiskers looks like. That and all it does, it just helps absorb. So there you have it. Time to get busy and shake off some of that dust. And for our next segment on all things bow, vertical bows, compound bows, crossbows, which of these will fit your needs in the field? And we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison, so make sure you tune in next week. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, you won't want to miss this week's Scorchy's Corner Classic. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sam watched the seagulls glide across the empty sky. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Coming up on the next episode of Outdoors Delmarva. We've got the whole story behind this beautiful alligator found in an eastern shore retention pond. 
We'll show you what he's been through and where he's going. We have some breaking news here, by the way, too. Bonnie has just named the alligator. What is it? Fruitland Frank. Fruitland Frank. You heard it here first, folks. And now it's time to check in with an old friend. Here's this week's Scorchy's Corner Classic. Sam stirred in his shell, moving both claws like wings and dragged his body on. Who is Sam? Sam is a 12-inch Chesapeake Bay blue crab that decided he's going to represent all the Chesapeake Bay blue crabs. What Sam is really is a Gary Cooper of the deep dark. And this gentleman is Joe Cahill, an author come lately, who discovered Sam some five years ago. Together they formed a partnership that has resulted in three paperback novels starring who else? Sam. So when Sam demanded his name grace the cover of book number one, he got it. Then came book number two, Summer's Perfume. And the title Summer's Perfume comes with the idea that when you steam crabs, to me that's Summer's Perfume. He's hunting for what we call, you know, Shangri-La, but I called it crab bra -la. It's a place where there's no crabbers, no uh, steam pots, no summer's perfume, plenty of sheet crabs, and you can just just live a good life. Of course, you tell us, wandering our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, your latest viewer videos and pictures. Outdoors Del Marva viewer pictures are sponsored by Shorts Marine. Here, fishy, fishy. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice. And Goody's Marine. Time now to take a look at some of the pictures and videos sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. And we begin with some viewer venture cam video taken by our friend Greg Beer. He's the mate aboard the fish bones out of the Ocean City Fishing Center. This video shows some action offshore from the recent Poor Girls Open. It's the world's largest female only billfish tournament. And while the gals didn't seem to have much luck offshore, they sure did have some fun. And all in the name of raising awareness for breast cancer. Get outdoors, Delmarva! Joseph and Cole Dickerson are taking advantage of the recent rockfish bite on the Nanticoke River. The boy's mom says they love getting outdoors and fishing on Delmarva. Harry Heist from Dover is one lucky fella to have snapped this shot. Check out these nice bucks in velvet. And Tammy Geiger Massey passed along this shot of her dog, Diesel, having a blast on his first ever Dove hunt. Until next time, for my buddy Mike Parker, I'm Captain Willie Dykes reminding you to get outdoors, Del Marva.